So welcome, I'm Cassidy Hall, Technology Integration Specialist for the Doceo Center of Innovation and Learning, which is part of the University of Idaho's College of Education. Um, and I'm going to share with you my journey with technology. So I, I created a Padlet page for this presentation so that you would be able to get back to all of the information. Um, and I'm going to start um, from the beginning of when I started teaching. So um, this is my 17th year in education and only my second year in higher education. I spent the first 15 in K-12 classrooms. And I started out as an English teacher. So um, one of the resources I used to use quite frequently was something called called Cable in the Classroom, which has since morphed into something called Cable Impacts. Uh, when it was Cable in the Classroom, basically uh, you could um, use this magazine that came to you every month and, and see which educational programs were out there. And then you could set your VCR, which was what I had back in the day, right, to record um, whatever I thought would be uh, beneficial to incorporate into my teaching. So um, this was a huge uh, thing for me, and this was bringing technology into your classroom. So. Um, you can see here that it has changed from cable in the classrooms. The idea is no longer the same. But however, they do have cable impacts now. And one of the things that they do hugely is um, to uh, press upon you the idea of teaching digital citizenship. And so they have a um, program in here um, about teaching digital citizenship and how to teach it to your students. Um, and it's very supportive and, and a very nice um, program to follow if, if you're required to teach digital citizenship. Um, after beginning as an English teacher and starting with that cable in the classroom, um, I, I started to learn, well, I have this huge background that I could bring into my English classroom. And my background was actually in broadcast journalism. So um, when I initially went to West Virginia University, um, I got a degree in broadcast journalism. And I, I worked in the field for a couple years and then decided to become a teacher. So it's all of that back background stuff that I could then pull into the classroom. And not only was I teaching English, but I was also teaching um, video productions course. So uh, it was really fun in the high school setting. And though um, we had very little support in terms of such things then, um, there is just tons and tons of support now. Uh, for instance, um, this is, you know, engaging the adolescent learner. Um, and it's all about using video and film in the classroom. And when I first started using video and film in the classroom, there really weren't too many resources out there um, to support that. And uh, now, I mean, it's just a, a very wide, acceptable part of your classroom culture. So um, that is one of the things that I, I've always found uh, very rewarding for students to, uh, to be able to bring that video in the classroom. I think after being a, an English teacher for a couple years, I also started to see needs beyond my own. And one of the needs I started to see was in everybody else's classrooms. You know, they would come to me and ask me, well, you know, what would you do about, you know, using this kind of technology in the classroom? They all knew that I had my own teacher webpage, and that was something that I started as a second year teacher. And, um, they all wanted to know how to build their own web pages. So even though I was only a second year teacher, I started doing um, little tech workshops after school for other teachers so that they could start to incorporate some of the ideas into their classroom. So such things as using cable in the classroom and building their own teacher web page. So whereas at that time there were, there were web pages out there, but there certainly weren't that many. Um, it now there are there's just a huge array of teacher web pages that you can look at for awesome ideas, um, and so this is the best website design award showcase for educators, and and this is a great place to go to see um, classroom websites that really have something special about them, and and a great place to go for those examples that are essential to what we do. 
So after sort of bringing other teachers into these technology workshops, I started to expand upon the idea and then actually reach out to teachers and say, okay, well, you know, you did a technology workshop with me. What other topics might you want to see? And I also would create things off of things that I observed. Uh, so one thing I always tried to do was um, to create a web page that supported that piece as well as what I was teaching. So you can see this is an old web page of mine. Um, be, when I was a librarian, so after being an English teacher for nine years, I also morphed into a librarian. And my technology courses changed greatly over the years. So. Um, you know, I had one that was a curriculum workshop for math and English. Um, I did one for, I used to do um, workshops for the Pennsylvania Institute for Instructional Coaching. Um, so I have some workshops such as that built into here. Um, and then I have a large array of ones that I just did within the school district. So, you know, here was a um, tech course on accelerated reader for teachers to actually learn how to use the program. Here's one on organizing email because that was a huge thing. Um, doing uh, Collins five types of writing, you know, and, and how can we integrate technology into something like that, you know, with things like Wordle, Wordle and, um, different tech devices. Um, I, I did a, something on the eye search and how you could integrate technology into research. And, and you can see that just a very wide array of tech workshops that I did for teachers. So um, I, I think that, you know, once I saw that need and started fulfilling that need, then the demand increased and teachers started asking me for specific things. And so um, instead of just providing uh, resources, I started to um, actually model instruction for them and go into their classrooms and begin modeling instruction. And so uh, this is an example of a web page that I had built after the fact and this web page was built as a model for teachers because of the fact that the state of Pennsylvania um, has a uh, tools available for every teacher where they can create their own free web page and so this was one that I went and created to model how to use that specific technology And I didn't start there, stop there, I should say. Um, so I also, um, as a library media specialist, which I eventually had become after being an English teacher, um, started to realize that there was a great lack of student and teacher research knowledge. And so, you know, I started to incorporate things such as the big six skills and you know going uh, step by step into you know well we have this wonderful tool called the internet but do people really know how to use it to access information and really getting into these categories of um, you know information seeking strategies and you know how how can you really effectively search for something on the internet. And so those became very important, not just within workshops for teachers, but within doing this for, for classrooms and students as well. And so as the resource provider, one of the goals I headed towards and, and one of my main um, purposes was to make sure I was providing resources across the board so that I wasn't only focusing on teachers and I wasn't only focusing on students but I was also considering what are the needs of parents you know what kind of resources do they need at home to support their learners what are the needs of our administration because if we really want to have people using technology throughout a building um, our administrators need to be modeling that use as well and then providing resources for other librarians because as a library media specialist, I realized that in getting my master's degree in, in um, school library and information technology, I was way above the curve in terms of where most librarians were in using technology. So 
after becoming a technology, or I'm sorry, after becoming a librarian, um, I started to change into a technology coach. And this was part of a program in Pennsylvania called Classrooms for the Future. And um, what we realized within that program, or what I realized as a technology coach, is that no problem was too small, that I need to um, respond to teachers' needs immediately, that I need to model how to use technologies in the classroom, that I needed to provide in-class support, especially the first few times they used a technology. But what I found out was that there was still something missing. And what was missing What I like to think was missing um, were instructional strategies in that mix. So I sort of switched from being in, in a technology coach to becoming an instructional coach. And you can see here that that was how I helped to identify my missing ingredient. So I began with um, the Penn Literacy Network and taking courses with Penn Literacy Network. The idea there being that um, it's all about literacy, right? So we're teaching literacy across the curriculum and that is so important to focus on. And then I became involved with Pennsylvania Institute for Instructional Coaching. And when I did that, I started to learn all of these instructional strategies that I could bring back to the teachers in the building. I also got involved with the Reading Apprenticeship Program. And Reading Apprenticeship um, allowed me to see things um, from a different perspective as well. So um, it, it, what I found, though, was that all these programs, uh, Penn Literacy Network, Pennsylvania Institute for Instructional Coaching, and Reading Apprenticeship Program were all pointing me in the same direction. And that direction was that um, the idea of common core standards was almost inevitable because we were going to go towards that heavy need for um, literacy across the curriculum and and that's really what what was being pushed through all of this and then supporting that through the use of technology so as a technology integration specialist now um, I've I've learned to connect all of these dots all of these things I've learned over the years and one of the things that became so 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 important to me is trying to um, present the use of technology in the classroom through a lens that works for teachers, okay? So, you know, my first thing here I have is that um, technology embedded in the Common Core Standards. So if, if teachers are taking on the Common Core Standards, then I'm going to find a way to support that process through the use of technology. And as we know, technology is just throughout the Common Core Standards. Um, the relevant relevancy to the Danielson framework, so we have states um, here in the state of Idaho, teachers are um, basically assessed in their performance um, through the Danielson framework, and that was the same way in Pennsylvania. So making sure that I'm tying that up with technology as well. Um, Tying in things like the universal design for learning and technology integration models and making sure that people are really looking at the scope of how technology is affecting their classroom as a whole. <clears throat> and then also emphasizing my K-12 background just to show teachers that, you know, I've been there. I've been through what you're going through. I, I know what you're dealing with and being able to truly support that process. So, you know, as part of the Doceo Center for Innovation and Learning, I go to K-12 schools across Idaho and, and do te technology um, integration with the schools. I, I do professional development on not just devices, but um, technologies that you can tie in to support your curriculum. So it's very much um, transitioned into something that, that surprised me, right? I don't think I ever expected to become a technology integration specialist. So the lessons I've learned um, are very important. Um, 
first of all, don't make assumptions. Uh, don't ever make an assumption that just because somebody is an older teacher that they're not going to be able to integrate technology into their classroom because it's so not true. Um, make sure that you're showing people how to take baby steps. That, you know, this isn't going to happen overnight and we don't want it to happen overnight and we want to be supportive throughout the whole thing by doing things such as providing resources and modeling what we're doing. And then focus on the requirements and not the technology. Focus on what the teachers need.